Sort of a melancholy day here. We have the last day of Dana White's Contender Series, at least this season eight. It's been a really fun season. Lots of contracts handed out. Dana has been a generous man. So let's hope that on this last night, he stays generous. We see five more fighters get their first shot at the UFC. Um, really fun card outside of Prediction Strike. It's basically pick em odds for every single fight. Um, it reflects that pretty closely on Prediction Strike. It's a little bit different. Um, so let's jump into it. Let's go into all these investments that you can possibly make to beat the market this weekend. All right, DWCS back with week 10. Let's get it again. And we have a Sean O'Malley, I don't know what that is. <laughs> caveman hybrid. Yeah. yeah. Like, honestly, it's uh, the pirate dude, but with both eyes. And Sean O'Malley's, like, tattoo on his chest. Uh, this, right. dude, this dude's nickname is the Amish Hammer, by the way. That's the least creative nickname. <laughs> yeah, Just yeah. Amish. Chuck Hammer behind it. I was yeah. saying. Not would not have all right, fair enough. All right, moving forward. The Amish hammer. So Mohammed Otto versus Jonathan Misalef. Um <laughs> Mikalef. All right, yeah. Uh all I see is a price change. I have nothing to say about their appearances. Walk it through it for us. So Otto, five pro fights, also a couple of pro kickboxing wins. Um, definitely displays the kickboxing in his few MMA fights that we've seen. He's a very technical guy on the feet, um, does what you kind of expect kickboxers to do. Lots of kicks, both high and low, solid jab. Um, kind of low volume on the feet. He's very technical, but doesn't throw in big combos or anything like that, really. He does have a knockout. Most of his wins come by way of grappling, though. So it is good to see that he does have that kickboxing background. Um, but he also feels comfortable enough with his grappling to rely on it more often than not. Um, he has good good wrestling overall. Uh, likes is good at dragging you down from the cage, getting you up against the cage. Um, definitely wrestles a bit too much, in my opinion, for how good he is at striking. Um, I don't really get it. Like that's where his background is. You'll see him pretty much resort to the wrestling early in all of the fights that he's in. Um, against Abdul Sami Walfazi, which I think was two fights ago. Um, he was attempting takedowns really early there. Abdul was able to reverse him multiple times on the ground with his judo. He was just throwing him around. He using his judo throws for a while too. Um, and if you watch, so Matt Special is who Otto knocked out. Um, and that was in the clinch with a head kick. It wasn't like, you know, the most technical striking knockout ever, but um that dude was a four and no prospect so pretty pretty decent knockout there um great kickboxing more technical striker of the two mika left is more of a pressure oriented guy wants to close the distance between you take you down work you down to the ground where he has really nice ground and pound top control good submissions um just very aggressive like it isn't insanely skilled anywhere but it just applies pressure all the time You'll see on his resume that he recently lost to Alden Bates, um, who just was able to defend his takedowns, eventually found a finish. Um, and in order for him to win this fight, he just needs to set the pace. He needs to be on his front foot the whole fight. He needs to be able to get that cage control. Um, Otto has good takedown defense, Better, definitely the better striker of the two. He has the grappling in his back pocket. Um, as long, I think as long as he makes the right decisions here, he can get it done. And by that, I mean, I don't want him to go wrestling heavy against uh, Mikalev because Mikalev is pretty well-versed in the wrestling and in the grappling. He's kind of sloppy on his feet, though. Otto has that kickboxing background. So if it stays on the feet, I am going to pick Otto by decision. Yeah, it doesn't really seem like people want to strike with Otto. He's pretty inexperienced he had no amateur fighting experience really obviously he's fought five times professionally now um but i just don't trust the lack of experience here this is one situation where i'm probably going to go with the favorite um i think if you can get auto on the ground he's pretty inexperienced and you can kind of stall a lot of uh situations even if you're not going for a submission it's going to be um pretty easy to just hold top control and kind of lag out the fight so I will uh, lean there for now. Yeah, this is going to be a good fight. I do think 
I, I've seen Otto as like, I think he's honestly too big of an underdog on PS. I've seen him as a, like a plus 170, a dog somewhere, like a plus 140 dog in other places. So he's like, he's like plus uh 140-ish. Okay, yeah. Board, kinda, I yeah. feel like th I feel this seems like a, a pick em fight to me, basically. So that kind of seems like it might be a bit off. But yeah, this is, this is a close one. It's going to be a fun fight. All right, moving on to the next one. Sorry, fun day for me. I get all my deep <laughs> reverse coming to life. Try to keep an eye on them. I saw Devonta Adams pull out from behind. Uh, what you call it? Aaron Rogers. Rogers. And yeah, yeah, and the first top comment, of course, goes: "Is this your sign to text your ex or whatever?" And I was crying laughing at that. <laughs> but moving forward, we got the woman, uh, Leslie Hernandez versus Julieta Martinez. Walk us through this one. We looks like we have a belt on this one to the right um but a bit of a di age difference here uh, so yeah we'll so we've got some fun nicknames in this one too we've got leslie hernandez aka dora the destroyer going yes, up sick. against julieta martinez the ninja ferret um <laughs> the ninja ferret is crazy <laughs> yeah it's dope um and so this is a kind of weird one to break down i couldn't only find one fight anywhere online for julieta martinez um and it was a regional one from like three years ago. So haven't seen much tape on her. Uh, what I do know, or at least what I've heard about her, is she has a taekwondo background. Definitely displayed that in the one fight I watched. She threw a ton of kicks at a super high volume really fast. A uh, bunch of spinning kicks. She finishes pretty much all of her combos with those kicks. Um, definitely not the highest levels of competition. Uh, like you can't find any of her fights, but she did beat... Fatima Juarez, who was 7-0. That was probably her best best win there. Um, she's worked in her grappling uh, based on her most recent results. She got an arm bar uh, that she snatched up after a grounded, pound, uh, grounded pounding her into softness. Um, and so Yeah, that's been a focus in her game. Leslie Hernandez, tough matchup. Uh, like, for her to win this, I think her path to victory is probably going to be in the wrestling limited wrestling background on Martina's side. Hernandez also has pretty good grappling, fights in the LFA. Um, she can, at times, struggle with forward pressure on the feet, though. Jay Gerand was uh, overwhelming her, and <clears throat> just, you know her volume was really working against Hernandez in that one. Um, Julieta kind of has a similar, not, not a similar style, but she's also aggressive on her feet. She has the Taekwondo background, uh, really high volume. Uh, Hernandez does also have a boxing background, um, fought some amateur boxing fights. I don't know if she ever actually fought professionally in boxing, but hands are pretty good. Um, probably could at least hold her own against Martinez. Um, and I, I do think Martinez will probably go out there, be the more aggressive fighter. I just haven't seen a ton of her defending takedowns. Um, I do suspect she's better on the feet. I think Hernandez will be a bit every better everywhere, though. All she needs to do is have a little bit of fight IQ, get the wrestling going early, top control. I'm going Leslie Hernandez by decision. All right. <laughs> On to the next. On to the next. On to the next. All right, so we've got Lieutenant Dan on the right and 275 over here. All right. Uh, I thought that would have been funnier. Never mind. <laughs> if you guys have been keeping up with the drama in Florida, there's a guy that was nicknamed Lieutenant Dan that had like 30 muck shots or something like that. Like an well, ridiculous. They thought, a, they thought he was a really bad guy, and it turns out that he was just – Kind of a bad guy. Yeah, like he's got kind of a with the same name who was a really bad guy. Oh, even better. Oh, and he um, was just doing like petty. Lieutenant Dan only only, only yeah. tried to set a woman on fire. Only. <laughs> yeah. Wow, yeah. No, that's why I encourage you to just look into everybody. Uh, if you um, this price discrepancy but. here feels like it might be a, a little much, but I do like the Montero side of these things. Um, Montero looks like a beast, is what I'm going to yeah. say. Like the guy on the left looks, I don't know, like yeah. Way more experience, fought 21 professional problem. fights by the age of 30, which is pretty impressive to get there. Um, BJJ, black belt, super comfortable on the ground. Um, haven't seen a ton of Delval before. Um, 
but it does seem like he has a, a tendency to kind of rely on the ground game at times when he's a little bit outmatched. And this is a situation where he will not be the superior grappler, even if he does tend to lean there. Um, I like Montero's pressure and ability to kind of push the pace in this one. I wouldn't be surprised if he picks up a, a later round finish in this fight. Right on. Yeah. yeah. Yadier's nickname, by the way, is the Cuban problem, uh, presumably because the Cuban crisis was already taken. <laughs> <That's> true. <laughs> um, the bro, looks like he just watched yeah. Fight Club. Is all I'm gonna, like. He looks like he watched Fight Club to me. <laughs> I can see that. He does look like he would. He kind of looks like he's got that uh, Brad Pitt vibe from. That's Vietnam. what I'm saying. He's just like I watched Fight Club and I dyed my hair and now yeah. I'm ready to fight. <laughs> um. So this dude fought Michael Aswell um, and beat him. Aswell lost by decision in that one. Um, he's a, a somewhat hyped up prospect uh, going up against Montero, who's obviously a lot more experienced than he is. 22 pro fights. Um, and Del Valle is 7-0, BJJ black belt. Uh, he kind of pulls guillotine a lot. Against Peña Alamov, he pulled four guillotines in that fight, which is kind of insane. And Alamov is like a kind of not so dangerous wrestler so he was just able to do that kind of all he wanted um but he does i mean it does display good cardio that this dude was just jumping guillotines the entire fight um not the best takedown defense striking defense pretty mid struggles with pressure at times against as well um he was on his back for pretty much the whole first round he was threatening a rear naked choke um but he did get put on his back um he ended up stealing that decision with his takedowns, gassed out as well. Cardio is just too good. Um, dude can definitely go three rounds, like full effort. Antonio, uh, small for flyway, mo like pretty much completely a wrestler. Uh, really good transitions, good control on top, very active in the ground and pound. Um, when he was fighting against Lucas Tavares, he got pieced up. Uh, and then gassed pretty bad, pretty quickly. Um, and another funny detail about that fight is that Tavares had multiple guillotines locked in against him in the first round of that fight, which is pretty interesting. Um, and Montero, not the best striking, pretty stiff, not the best head movement. Always, I mean, it doesn't really matter though, because his game plan is always get the fight to the ground, wrestle. Um, not I, he does have subs recently not the most dangerous guy because he does see a lot of his fights go the distance um kind of slowed down in that fight with Tavares and Tavai I, I think his cardio is going to be the difference maker here I think he's probably going to be able to do more in the grappling front than will Antonio and I'm going to go exact method I think Yadier pulls guillotine and wins by guillotine at some point in this fight just because Antonio has been susceptible to that in the past Yadier is going to be going crazy so that's it that's seems like his reliance on the guillotine has kind of been a bad it's thing a, it is past, a bad though. thing it's definitely like he he's ended up in some bad spots and like he did win one fight from it but it was against like an 11 and 10 like cone out there like I don't know if that was really a good thing because then it kind of led to him being like, oh, I can just do this whenever I want. And it probably isn't the smartest tactic, especially against a guy who is more than capable of navigating situations on the ground and kind of maneuvering those situations. Like if he tries to shoot a guillotine and it's just not there at all, like you wouldn't be surprised if it ends up with him getting subbed. Yeah, so no, I, that, yeah, and I, I do not support just shoot, jumping guillotine all the time. Definitely not, but... I could see it happening with Montero gassing out into the second or third, Yider just staying active, like maybe pieces him up a bit on the feet and then jumps in there. Um, but yeah, definitely an underdog pick. This is lower confidence. Um, it's going to be a good fight. Sounds good. All right, on to the next one. We have, did one just like put tattoos and a hat on? Like <laughs> That's no, that was the like clear. They look photo of him very, the very similar. <laughs> You're right, actually. They kind of do. Like, what? literally, you just take the tattoos, put them on him, put, give him a hat, and you've got, yeah, <laughs> the disguise. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. All right, cook them better than I can before they find me and beat my ass. Um, Piccinini, uh, this dude fought on week four contender series against Jack Duffy. 
won in a decision, and that was kind of a contentious one. Uh, I believe I had Jack, Jack Duffy winning that fight. Um, that And then that was supposed to be a rematch on this. That fizzled out. And then they found Gruel on short notice, who is a really good replacement fighter, I think. This is going to be an interesting fight for sure. Um, it's about pick em odds everywhere, I think. Um, PGN is a bit of a favorite. Bit of a favorite? Okay. Um, 45 ish. Yeah, and he really did not. Piccinini didn't look good in the striking against Duffy. Um, he, like, we know who he is, though. He has an extensive wrestling background, D1 wrestling champion. Um, he was getting pieced up on the feet by Duffy, though. Did rock Duffy eventually, which might have helped turn the tides in his favor a little bit. Um, and was able to wrestle him, get him to the ground, got some control there, which is how he won that decision in the third round. But Garul, really good fighter. He's 9-0 and against good competition. Um, he's the most recent Fury FC champion, beating Jacob Silva, who has been on the Contender Series multiple times. Uh, definitely a high-pressure fighter. Um, really powerful kicks, high-volume punches in the clinch, good top control and ground and pound on the ground, um, good cardio, uh, striking defense, does kind of get worse and worse as the fight goes on like because of you know cardio he lowers his hands a bit um is definitely less accurate in his takedowns um than his nick uh probably shoots less too he does shoot less um he is constantly moving though he's probably going to have the cardio advantage here i would say um good boxing combos when he wants to use them is very, very powerful. Just not the highest volume all the time. He also has a wrestling background. Um, I, so Piccinini obviously just needs to get the wrestling going to win this one. Um, Garul, I think can for sure control the striking if Piccinini is not careful. Um, he's a big flyweight and with a full camp, I think his cardio should look better. I think the wrestling is just going to be there for him. Um, I was not convinced at all by his striking against Jack Duffy, but I do see this one going to the ground, and I'm honestly going to go with another decision for P Piccinini here. Agreed. Um, super good wrestler. Could probably have three national championships in his weight class if Spencer Lee just wasn't in his division, who was like – maybe the biggest phenom and best college wrestler of all time, arguably. Um, so we kind of just got a bad draw there. But um, overall, I think that Garul has probably fought more skilled strikers and everything than Piccinini. Obviously, he's not the greatest striker. Um, but I don't really feel like in Fury, they gave him all that many guys that were capable of um, the pressure on the ground that Piccinini will apply. It seems like they gave him a lot of pretty favorable matchups with guys that would want to strike with him and uh, weren't necessarily the greatest grapplers because I feel like that's kind of a weakness of his. So I feel like if Piccinini can kind of just set the pace here and and take this fight to the ground, it should be a easy, um, probably boring decision, but one that should be relatively stress-free, I think. I, I do think it's worth also noting that uh, Piccinini was super short notice against Jack Duffy. Like... I think it was like yeah. a week notice, and he has like almost yeah. not not a full camp, but well, I yeah, guess it was like three or four days. Camp. Yeah, so that's gonna come. <laughs> to play All righty, on to the next one. We've got the main event here: our Amish man versus Geraldo Souza. Walk us through it. How's this one supposed to go? Will the Amish get it done? Um. So, Grant, if you could verify, the Nick is a decent underdog here, right? Yeah, like 150-ish. Cool, cool. Um, yeah, so you're getting a pretty good deal for him, I would say, on prediction strike, um, if you're on that side of things. He, Klein, is a is a pretty good striker. Not, I'd say okay striker. Um, kind of is kicks-oriented. It does have a decent jab. Um, good takedown defense. Also has great get-up game. Um, good wrestling in general, I would say. Um BJJ practitioner and against Colin Huckbody, he uh, he completely broke him with the wrestling in that fight. Um, so 
his cardio is really, really good when he's in the c- control of the wrestling. Cardio could be better when he's on his back, kind of struggling to get out of positions. But like I said, he does have really good get-up game. So you're not always worrying about that. Um, Klein fought Dorian Dekai, um, kind of gassed by the end of that first round. Um, Dekai was just piecing up his body. By the third round, he was just completely out of it. Uh, failed to take down, got subbed. And that's kind of why I say his cardio, his cardio looks so much better when he's controlling the pace of the fight, when he's constantly getting the takedowns in that he wants. He's kind of helpless if he's on his back foot the entire time. Um, and Geraldo Souza, this guy is nasty. Um, if you go watch his highlight reel on YouTube, you'll see a bunch of, you know, out stiff knockout wins where he just rushes in on his opponent and absolutely unleashes. Um, he was originally meant to fight Elaine Vandemert, who was 8-0. Uh, he probably would have lost that one. Uh, and then that fighter pulled out. Wes Schultz stepped in, who lost by TKO, a kind of bad one to Mansoor Abdul-Malik in, I think, week, maybe, it was either week one or week four, don't remember. Um, but yeah, and then I assume he stepped out of this fight because of how hurt he got in that one. Um, but he, Wes Schultz is teammates with Nick Klein. That's how this fight was made. Um, and Souza, he it has very fast hands on the feet, uh, lightning fast in the pocket. He's really small for this weight class. Um, but he does throw a ton of combos every time he closes in. Um, and despite the highlight reels, like the electric finishes, he has really, really bad cardio. He wastes so much energy during his fights like he gasses out bad in the second and second two rounds consistently he kind of runs around the cage not even considering his cardio which is something i really really don't like about his game and it's something that like without watching a full fight of his you wouldn't really see because he's just an absolute killer um he is shooting a lot of his takedowns from the clinch um probably wrestles more than he should considering how good he is in the striking department and how much energy it takes out of him. Um, and I think this is going to go one of two ways, this fight. Um, it Souza can knock out Klein in the first round, I think, here. Otherwise, Klein out-wrestles Souza probably. Souza over-wrestles like he does most fights, shoots too many takedowns. And like even though Klein doesn't shoot a, a ton it's like even if Souza initiates those wrestling exchanges Klein is the far better wrestler and will be able to take over like Souza shoots takedowns for no reason he doesn't actually have any like real <laughs> in my opinion uh his sub wins on his on his resume kind of come after knocking his opponents down already and then just kind of vulturing them out um so yeah I, that, that wasn't I mean I'm basically saying Geraldo first round or Nick Klein any other time in the fight, so I'll go Nick Klein by sub. I got Souza by sub. I like it. So kind of going exactly opposites here. Um, I, I just think it's a little concerning that both of Klein's losses have come on the ground as an amateur as well. We don't really see that on that record, but um, I, I just trust Souza's ability to find a creative way to end this fight on the ground. Um, I mean, he, he's finished five of his nine wins on the ground by submission. I think, like you said, it could probably lead to um, him using up a little too much energy or kind of just putting himself in harm's way a little bit on the ground. But I'm not really too worried about Klein's ability to actually get a finish on the ground. I'm more worried about his ability to just kind of hold control and outpoint some rounds in this fight. So I think he's kind of relatively out of harm's way in that world. So I, I will take Souza by decision. I mean, by submission here. Oh, Give yeah. me the Amish hammer to get a knockout. Amish hammer, hammer knockout. Can't be calling yourself the Amish hammer and just be wrestling all the time. Yeah. So. I also Maybe. feel like Klein is the worst of the three opponents that he would have had, and it's kind of relatively short notice and everything. Like It just feels like a situation where the UFC was more interested in seeing Souza fight somebody because they had some sort of interest in him potentially getting a contract or something in the future. So it feels like the first two fell through and they were like, all right, here's, here's this guy. P- Pura Vida is good though. They've got some good fighters, but no, I, I, yeah. I get that logic. Um, 
Cool. I just yeah, would have been more confident with either of the other two that canceled getting a win. Yeah, I was never a big fan of party time, <laughs> Wes Schultz. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think Geraldo, I I think the first round knockout super live, like Grant said, this dude's pulled out some crazy subs before. I'm still riding with the climb by sub pick, but thank you guys for listening to the preview. Yeah, that said, appreciate y'all. Talk to you next time. And yeah, keep your eye out for all the news that's dropping today for NFL, if you're interested in that. But of course... Put together something wild on the prediction strike. But until next time, peace, y'all. Peace.